Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH. Today, we're gonna do something you probably have never seen before, and that is we're gonna take a look at the two super high-end workstations from both Lenovo as well as Supermicro. Both of these workstations are based on the AMD Ryzen Threadripper Pro 5995WX, which is 64 cores, 128 threads, and you can put like easily a half a terabyte of memory in these things. We also have high-end NVIDIA GPUs. And so what I thought was, since we have both systems, let's answer the age old question, Lenovo or Supermicro? Now, a lot of people will tell you that these two systems are basically the same, except one's from Lenovo, one's from Supermicro. But having tested both for a little while, I can definitely say that there is a clear winner in my mind. Now, before we get started, a disclosure, we did get both these systems from Lenovo and Supermicro because as you're gonna see, this is like 30 to $40,000 worth of workstation behind me. And we frankly couldn't just go and buy those just for a video. And since we don't have a sponsor for this video, one thing I do wanna plug is the fact that we do have a new membership feature on the STH YouTube channel that you can go join down below. We're gonna use that to go and buy some of the really kind of cool, fun little boxes that uh, we wouldn't get to otherwise look at. So if you can support us, that'd be awesome. But before we get to anything, let's start with pricing because I think that's really important just to ground ourselves on. Now these systems both use the AMD Ryzen Threadripper Pro 5995WX. And we did get a little bit of configuration differences. So what we did was we actually got on the configurators for both Lenovo and Supermicro. And we said, hey, you know, what's the difference in pricing between the two of them? This system over here is the Lenovo ThinkStation P620. And this is known as the first system that had Threadripper Pro. And also the Threadripper Pro 5000 series is the first one that had those. And this this thing, frankly, uh, Lenovo is openly talking about the fact that this thing has basically killed their dual Xeon servers or workstation sales because this thing is so fast that it's just become like the de facto awesome workstation. Now, the other system that we have over here, that's the Supermicro AS5014 ATT. So what I did was I got on the configurator and I came up with something that was pretty close to the configurations that we have. The configurations were a little bit different. So we did things like we had, we put that 64 core SKU because that's what we had in both of them. The Supermicro system can come in either air-cooled or liquid-cooled since we have the liquid-cooled version. I figured we'd use that. We configured 512 gigs of memory, which we actually have on the Supermicro system, even though the uh, Lenovo system only came with 120 gigs, but of course we upgraded that to actually test it because 128 gigs, if you have a 64-core CPU, is stupid. Let's call it what it is. We also configured an NVIDIA RTX A6000 series GPU, which we have in one of these. We also did test the A4500. This is a little bit of a lower-end GPU. We had one from PNY that you may have seen on the STH main site and in these systems. So I just kind of wanted to go and say like, hey, we did test that out. We also tested out a really cool card with eight M.2 SSDs from High Point with Sabrent SSDs. So that was super cool. And we did test them in both these systems. We'll talk about why that's important a little bit later. Before the storage that we actually have in these, we only configured a two-ish terabyte, 1.92 or two terabyte NVMe SSD. And with that configuration, some interesting stuff. So first off, the Lenovo system, that actually had a uh, estimated value, which I don't know if that's just some kind of fantasy number, but the estimated value for that was around $34,000. Now, of course, they're not gonna go sell this for $34,000 because of course they wouldn't do that. And so instead what they're doing is they're selling it for, I guess, discounts and discounts come out to the about $14,000. So it's about $20,000 or so for this configuration. And we also went over to the Supermicro configurator and got something about as close as we could. There was one big difference that we'll talk about in a second, but the basic price for the Supermicro system was just around $14,000. So $20,000 for Lenovo, $14,000 for Supermicro, a $6,000 difference, which is absolutely huge, by the way. Now, there were a couple big differences, and the big one by far was the fact that Lenovo comes with a three-year on-site warranty, whereas the Supermicro system is a like cross-shipping one. So, so there is a difference between the cross-ship warranty and the on-site warranty, but again, this is a $6,000 difference. So like, if you really, really cared about it that much, you could probably just go and buy a spare for every couple of these that you bought because uh, you're saving a ton of money. So just wanna point out the fact that you know, there, there are options there, of course, and, uh, and, and we definitely, you know, we got as close as we could, but it's the best we could to get you a price that's apples to apples between the two. So the questions that we're gonna go into today are one, well, is one of them better? And two, is the Lenovo system worth 43% more than the Supermicro system? So the game plan is I wanna show you the outside then the inside of the systems, talk about some of the things that are similar and different. And then I also wanna to get to performance and talk about the slight performance difference that we actually noticed here. With that, let's get to the hardware. 
Now, the first thing you're gonna notice behind me is that this Lenovo is substantially smaller than the Supermicro. Okay, I'm super dark here and it sounds all echoey, but these things are just massively different in size uh, and you're gonna see why in a little bit. Okay, so let's talk about those front features first. Now in the Lenovo, we get two USB type A ports and two USB type C ports. All four of those ports are marked as 10 gigabit per second ports. Aside from that, we also get the card reader, which I really like the fact that this actually has a card reader, even though you can just get a USB. It is nice that this actually has it. And then you also get the ability to have a slim optical drive. And then there is a five and a quarter inch bay here. Now looking at the front of the Supermicro, we get something that's definitely a little different. We get one type C port instead of two. We also get four type A ports. Now two of those type A ports are um, actually USB 2.0 two ports, but that is a little bit different. And uh, you know, I guess that's really just for your keyboard and mouse. One other difference is on the audio, we get a headset jack on the Lenovo, but we get separate heads, headphones and also microphone jack on the Supermicro, little difference. But on the Supermicro, and I'm over here just so I can hopefully show you this, but you'll see that there are these two bays over here. These are actually kind of a weird little feature and they're actually two SATA SSD or I guess hard drive bays too. But if you have SATA SSDs or hard drives, you can actually go and put them on the front of the chassis. Now I know to a lot of folks, that's gonna sound super weird, but it's actually quite useful, especially if you do video production, if you're using like an Atomos, uh, like Ninja to actually go and do recording with a SATA SSD. Having something like that, where you can actually potentially just pop that SSD in and start actually uploading footage could actually be really useful. Also, if you just wanna transfer files, I think that's a decent idea too. And then the other feature is a door, which actually opens on this chassis. And here we get fans, but we also get two five and a quarter inch bays. So at this point we've gone through the front, but I think you pretty much get what's going on in terms of differences between the two and why the Supermicro is much larger than the Lenovo. We're just gonna have a little bit more in terms of expandability as we go through this. So in terms of rear IO, the difference is absolutely huge here. On the Lenovo, you get a total of six USB ports. I think two of them are actually just USB 2 ports and they are all USB type A ports. Then we get a PS2 keyboard and mouse port, which is something that's a little different. The other thing though, is that on the back, we only get uh, three audio jacks. Comparing that to Supermicro, Supermicro has a total of seven USB type A ports and then also a type C port on the back. Remember that the Lenovo did have an extra front type C port. So that's just kind of where Supermicro puts one of, the, one of them on the back, one of them on the front. But in terms of audio on the Supermicro, we have a total of five jacks. Plus we have the optical out because this actually has a 7.1 audio solution. Whereas the Lenovo is only 5.1. Next, let's talk about networking because that's also important. The Lenovo has an Marvel Quancha AQC 107, which is a little bit older of a generation of a 10 G base T connection. Of course, the fact that it has 10 G base T is awesome, but that's basically what it's using. On the super micro side, you get the newer AQC, uh, I think 113, and that might sound familiar. I think that's actually the one that Apple uses in the, uh, like the Mac mini. So this, the one difference of that is I think that this one can actually do 10 megabits per second because it's a newer PCI Gen 4 version. So the AQC 113 is actually a little bit newer than the 107 that's on on the Lenovo. You're also gonna notice though that there's a second NIC, but there's also a VGA port and a serial port. This system has IPMI, so you can manage it just like you would a server, and you have all the out-of-band management features, IKVM, all that kind of stuff that you have on a server, except it's in a Threadripper Pro workstation board. Lenovo doesn't have their X Clarity controller on here. Instead, they just have uh, AMD Dash, which is, uh, I guess, good if you wanna just have like a basic desktop, but uh, clearly the server system is, uh, you know, the IPMI system is much better on, on a full server, so that's uh, what you get here. And by the way, the super micro system also has an Intel i210 one gig NIC, which could be used for other things, but also it's really there to go and service the IPMI out of band management interface. Okay, now turning them over to the open side, I guess, let's just kind of look at the difference between, I'm gonna move out of the way here for a sec. And what you're probably noticing is that the Lenovo system is just kind of a standard black, just, just that's all it is. Whereas the super micro system, we actually have something that is a clear cover. Lenovo has a super easy system for opening this that I frankly really like. You just have this little handle, you pop it out, and then you pull off the side of the system like this. Now the super micro system definitely has a little bit more. There are two thumb screws and then there's this like button that hopefully I can feel it and hit it. It's right here. And then, uh, then the side panel pops off. Okay, so looking at these two systems, you can see some differences immediately here, right? Uh, on the Lenovo system that's over here, you can see that we have an air-cooled unit and the little dims have little uh, little fans on them, which is which is just kind of crazy fun. Uh, I always thought that was really fun when I first saw that, when we first did the review of this back uh, in like 2021. The Supermicro system doesn't need dim fans apparently, and it also has a liquid cooling solution. You have to remember that the AMD Ryzen Threadripper Pro 5995WX that's in these systems, they run at like 
280 watt TDP, which for this generation is pretty high. Just wait until we get to Genoa. But for this generation, that's pretty darn high. And I think that these cooling solutions, when we get to the performance section, are actually going to show you a little bit of difference between the two of them. But both systems have eight channels of memory. They can take DDR4, 3200, and you can add RDIMs and all that kind of stuff so you can get ECC memory in them. That's pretty similar between the two. Now, something that you're going to notice is that on the Lenovo system, you can actually start getting at the PCIe expansion cards. And they have a nice little system that actually secures the PCI cards. So this is a uh, NVIDIA A6000 here. And you can see that we're actually secured to the chassis using this nice little thing here. So it's actually not that hard to go get to the uh, expansion cards. And also it has a nice support system for them. So like if you have a heavier card, you can actually put them on there, especially it's important if you have an expensive uh, professional graphics card, kind of like this one. But the thing I don't understand at all is actually this whole uh, super micro cover thing here, because you're going to see that we do have a cover and it says super micro on it and all that kind of stuff. And there is normally a clear panel here, so you can actually see it. But at the same time, um, you know, frankly, it's just one more thing if you want to go get back to the expansion slots that you have to remove. And it just takes a little bit of extra time. I've never found this thing to be super easy to remove and like put back in. I've probably done it 10 times. So I just, I don't like, it looks kind of cool, but I also wish that it was a little bit easier to get behind. It's just kind of there. But once we're inside, we can see that we actually have a GPU support system. We're adding card support system. So Supermicro has that also. I just kind of like the Lenovo one, frankly, a little bit better. But once you get inside, you can definitely tell that the Supermicro one has a lot of expansion capability. Now, in terms of expansion capability, the Lenovo ThinkStation P620, it has six expansion slots, which is absolutely awesome. Although four of those PCIe Gen 4 expansion slots are by 16 and two are by eight. On the super micro side, it's a lot easier. They're all six of them are by 16. Now, if you're using large GPUs, you're probably gonna block the by eights anyway. And so I totally get that. But on the flip side, if you're using things like when we put the high point card where we actually had eight NVMe or M.2 NVMe SSDs that we're adding, that's a great case of where you'd actually want a by 16 instead of a by eight. Okay, now on the expansion capabilities, let's also talk about the storage. So the Lenovo system is set to have up to six SATA 3 ports, but the Supermicro only has a total of four. And two of those, remember, are gonna be used for those front panel, uh, just two and a half inch bays anyway. Now inside the system, you'll see that the Lenovo unit has two three and a half inch little bays that are just kind of like internal. They're not really hot swap. And Supermicro for its part also doesn't have hot swap internal three and a half inch bays, but you know, there's four of them instead of just two. Lenovo though does have another option that you can add. So you could actually have four if you wanted. So although our Lenovo system doesn't have it, you could definitely configure it. And so we can't really take points off for Lenovo for that. And you're gonna notice in our Supermicro system that's here, we actually have two Kyoxia NVMe SSDs that are sitting there. And on that point of U.2, the Supermicro actually has U two U.2 ports where the Lenovo system does not. The Supermicro also has a lot more in terms of M.2 capability. Lenovo allows you to install two M.2 SSDs, whereas Supermicro allows you to install a total of four M.2 SSDs. And by the way, this motherboard looks absolutely crazy because you have four NVMe or M.2 NVMe SSD slots on it. And let's talk about the power supply real quick. Supermicro's power supply is from 1.2 kilowatts up to two kilowatts, depending on the voltage. Like if you're at like 1, 110 or 120 or something like that, you're at the lower end of 1.2. But if you're at higher voltage, you can actually go get up to two kilowatts on Supermicro's power supply, but it's a lot more like a consumer power supply where it's kind of like fixed in there and then there are cables on it. The Lenovo unit is actually a little bit different. Now this is only a one kilowatt power supply, but it has this like weird little hop swap or not even a hot swap, it's called cold swap, I guess, but it's an easy to swap feature where you just kind of plug the power supply in. So I think the overall theme of the two systems is, uh, is pretty easy, right? The Lenovo system is clearly designed. It's a lot easier to work on without tools. And I think that Lenovo has a easier system to work on, clearly a little bit more serviceable. On the flip side, Supermicro has a bigger chassis. They have a lot more expansion slots. And so I would say that Supermicro maybe is a little bit harder to service, but the plus side is that you can go put a whole lot more stuff in it. Okay, so let's talk about performance here real quick. And you can actually see that we have the NVIDIA RTX A6000 in here. Uh, and we also have the A4500, which we did piece on on the STH main site, but uh, we just don't have that in, in the system right now. We've used both GPUs in both systems just to kind of see what the difference is in terms of PCIe card performance. And what we found was that they were very close when we started running our machine learning benchmarks. We saw very, very close performance between the two systems, which is about what you would expect. The variation was usually within about one to one and a half percent max. And so for our purposes, we actually consider that a test variation. So I would not say that one is faster than the other in terms of being able to cool these PCIe cards. We also ran both systems with the A6000 
6,000 as well as that high point 8 M.2 card because that was just really cool. And we just we ran that with high end PCIe Gen 4 NVMe SSDs from Sabrent. And what we saw was that even with both those cards, they were able to run in these systems no problem without overheating. So I think that that's kind of, to me, the PCIe expansion cooling was pretty similar between the two of them. Now, the CPU side was definitely a little bit different. And I think that's frankly due to the cooling. So when we ran our initial benchmarks, we basically just ran one, one loop of the benchmarks and then we kind of ran all of our benchmark loops. And then we just kind of took those numbers and we looked, we compared them between the two systems. And in those systems, again, I think we were within our test variation. So there wasn't really that big of a difference when these systems were kind of starting from like pretty cold, just warmed up a little bit and then actually going and run their workloads. Now, the flip side, what we did was I just wanted to see what would happen if, you know, like a lot of these times these systems are used for like overnight rendering or like rendering that can take 20, 30 hours longer, whatever, like you render all weekend or whatever. And so I wanted to see what happens when these systems get heat soaked. And when we did that, we saw that the Supermicro system did its benchmark runs and actually ended up being about four to 5% faster than the Lenovo unit. And I really think that's, that's really the difference between the air cooling, a 280 watt TDP CPU versus liquid cooling it. I mean, you can even just see this behind me. This is kind of a cool looking little cooler that has two fans and all that kind of stuff and heat pipes and stuff like that for Lenovo. But on the Supermicro system, this entire top of the chassis is like a triple fan radiator. This is just giant radiator up here. Over time, if you actually go run the, the system under load and you get a lot of heat built up in it, it turns out the Supermicro system is actually faster. And that was something that we weren't expecting, but it was kind of interesting. And not everybody has that use case, of course. But at the same time, if you do care about performance, I think that Supermicro probably gets a little bit of an edge just for that. Now, one other important thing I want to talk about with these systems is the fact that Lenovo uses AMD PSB and enables it, whereas Supermicro doesn't. And if you don't know what AMD PSB is, it's a feature of AMD CPUs that there are field programmable fuses in the CPU that can be set by vendors. So it's optional that a vendor uses them. And if you use that as a vendor, then you end up vendor locking that CPU. So if you have a Lenovo CPU and you have an AMD PSB system, the fuses get blown once you're at the factory. And then what happens is that your CPU can only be used by Lenovo. So so this Threadripper Pro, we can't go pull it out and put it into the super micro system. Now I will just point out that Lenovo is not the only company that does it. I know HPE is not using it, but Dell, for example, is using AMD PSB in its servers. And it even goes down to some of the Lenovo desktops and stuff like that with Ryzen. We've done a number of pieces on this. And so if you go look at our video archives, we have a bunch on AMD PSB, both for servers, as well as the when we did the original P620 review. And then again, when we did the tiny mini micro series, we also found it. And I also did a piece for Linus Tech Tips, uh, where we just kind of did a little guest spot on one of their videos talking about AMD PSB. Now to some people, I understand that AMD PSB sounds awesome. But to me, the thing I don't like is the fact that if you have a CPU that's perfectly good, over time, the motherboards will wear out. We have these CPUs that most likely will still be good and they won't have systems to go put in because there's only so many Lenovo motherboards out there. And also just like if people go, like what we actually found it the first time in these Threadripper Pro systems is we had folks that uh, work at a big studio that were using these, they're like, oh, these things are awesome. But they would buy these systems with the 16 core parts. They would then go upgrade to like the 64 core parts after market. They would try selling off the 16s and then find out that like those 16s kept coming back returned to people saying, hey, they don't work in my system. And it was because of this AMD PSB feature. And that's actually where we found this whole vendor locking back in the day. So because of the impacts that that has on circular economy and also just reusability and all that kind of stuff, we could never give this Lenovo system, if we did an environmental score, I would never give this Lenovo system over a five out of 10, because I think that that is a completely value destroying feature that is not good for the environment. And I can't believe Lenovo actually uses it. Lenovo says, well, it's an AMD feature, which it is, but it's an optional feature that is dependent on the vendor to go do. Lenovo uses it, Supermicro does it, and a lot of the other vendors like also Asus and Gigbyte don't do that feature as well. We've looked at their motherboards. Okay, so what do we learn in this entire thing? I think both of these systems are of clearly good. I mean, they're both actually very nice systems. And I think personally, I would be happy with either system because these are like hot rod, super like dream machines. Let's call it what they are, right? These things are both over 14 to $20,000. I mean, that's crazy money and uh, super cool systems, right? And I've definitely heard that the Lenovo box has been a category killer for them. I mean, they're, they're saying that that thing is just taking over sales. It is absolutely awesome. And I can understand why, frankly. So if you're a Lenovo shop and you buy like a lot of Lenovo desktops for your entire organization, 
organization and you have some folks that you know really need these kind of like high-end workstations so you're going to go buy high-end workstations you want Threadripper Pro I and mean, frankly if you already have Lenovo like an entire Lenovo desktop infrastructure laptops all that kind of stuff you're most likely going to end up buying this and I really don't see a re compelling reason for most buyers that if you're a Lenovo shop you're going to end up buying the Supermicro right but at the same time if you're not a Lenovo shop I have no idea how I would recommend you to get the P620 over the Super Micro box. I think the two cases I could make are the fact that the Lenovo unit is smaller and also the Lenovo unit has a three year on site warranty, which is Super Micro is still that cross ship mail in one. Now, as neutral as I am, and I, in fact, I like both of these systems, I can say that there's a clear winner, right? Unless you have extreme space constraints or maybe you just need that three year on site warranty, then I think the clear answer is that the Super Micro is a better system. It's bigger, but it has also better cooling, it has more expandability in it, and it just has more features. And while the Super Micro Micro AS5014 ATT, that box, um, you know, may have more features, but it's also way less expensive. Just the fact that you're saving like $6,000 for the Super Micro over the Lenovo, like frankly, I would take that 30% discount any day. Hey guys, I hope you like this video. We have a ton of really cool content coming in, especially with Genoa coming up. Uh, I'm super excited about those processors next. But if you did like this video, well, why don't you give it a like, click subscribe and turn on those notifications. You can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.